Hi everybody. So I recently went to San Diego for work and I uh, had about an hour and a half between when I got to my hotel and when I, the first meeting began that I had to walk around the city and take some photos. And buildings are one of my favorite things to photograph. So this picture of the Hilton down by the conference center was one of the pictures I got off of my SD card. And boy is this a disappointing result. It's, it's sharp and it's got a nice depth of field uh, but my biggest pet peeve about building photographs are buildings that look like they're in the process of falling over in the picture so what makes this building look like it's in the process of falling over I'm gonna drag this line over here from the edge that wall should be vertical it's uh, meeting this guide down here at the bottom but it is way off up here. Now, here's the thing. I could correct this by rotating the image. Image rotation, arbitrary. I'm going to guess that's uh, 2.65. This is a dry run. I actually have not practiced this. And let's see if that's correct. Oops. Let me grab a different guide here. So it's close. It's closer. But now you can see the rest of the world is really tilted. Over here especially, like that lamppost isn't even close to vertical. So rotating the, cam rotating the canvas clearly is not the only, or not the solution that's going to work for this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to use Photoshop to do what's called the Scheimflung effect. Basically we're going to remove these converging verticals uh, by causing the software to treat this image as though the camera had movements or were equipped with a tilt shift lens. Now this is not a great catch-all solution. This is a good way to make minor corrections to uh, photos where there are unflattering verticals, but this is a good way like this one, this one will work, but if this, if this building were much taller, it, it really would not work. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Filter, Distort, Lens Correction. In Photoshop CS6, uh, this is in a different place. It's up here somewhere, but it's the same function. It's called Lens Correction. I don't know if this existed in previous versions of Photoshop to CS4 or not, but this is in 4, 5, and 6 at least. So we're going to go into lens correction, and this is what we're going to be concerned with down here, this horizontal perspective. I'm sorry, vertical perspective is what we're concerned with. And oh, I skipped a step. If we were to simply adjust the vertical, uh, the vertical shape, if we were to take this square and turn it into a keystone right now, then we'd have some white spaces over here, and some of this fairly attractive sky would be cut off. So we're going to change the canvas size first and we're going to go by percent. I'm going to expand at 30 percent in each direction. Now what this does, this does two things. One, it makes sure that we don't lose any of the vertical aspect of the image as we change the geometry, but also it puts what's being changed more in the center of the image, which means we're going to have to change the geometry to a greater overall extent, but it will have a lesser uh, final and visual effect on how some of these lines mo uh, change as we change the geometry. Also, there, uh, because we'll keep more of this vertical, uh, more of the vertical up here, the distortion will be in the clouds where it's not noticeable versus in the building where it is noticeable. And yes, there's going to be distortion to the image because we're changing this from a square to a keystone. So we're going to try this again. Distort, Lens Correction, and here's the Lens Correction dialog. And this grid is going to be of paramount importance as we bring this to, vert uh, to a, a vertical, uh, to, 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 where the, sorry, to where the verticals are not converging like they are right now. Now we have a problem in that this line is vertical. Very strange, nonetheless. This line's vertical, this one's not. We're going to try to correct for that. So I'm going to start off. Excuse me. I'm going to start off with negative 26, and you can see right away that got got us pretty close to vertical on this side. 
what took us a little bit out of vertical on this side. So I think a, a better solution might be just to go negative 24. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit to 50%. And you can see the grid size doesn't change, so this gives us a better idea of what's going on here. And that's not an unacceptable, in my mind, amount of change. Uh, I'm sorry, amount of being off vertical. But what we have done is corrected this to where it's much closer to vertical. In fact, if anything, it's, uh, it's maybe a little bit over vertical. But most architectural photos that, ha that, that were taken with cameras that have movements uh, in the front and back planes, in the lens and film planes, uh, there is a little bit of distortion like this. Now, negative 24 is, is a hefty amount of distortion for this image. So we might actually scale this back to negative 20. Ooh, I'm not sure I like that. Let's go with negative 22. And let's change the angle slightly to negative 0.8. Uh, negative 1. Now what that does, ah, that's pretty good. So we can see this is vertical, or near enough for what I want to do, which is share this on Picasso. And this is really pretty, pretty much vertical over here. So we have, we've, we've corrected for the building looking like it was falling backwards and made it look very vertical. And there's basically no distortion up here. I'm going to check the, uncheck the preview button so you can see the original. Now that. So you can see how it's changing. It's changing the geometry of the building and uh, the geometry of the image in general. There we go. Now, another reason, now, now that we have that done, this created a second layer. So we're going to immediately flatten this image. There's no reason to have multiple layers for, for a single image like this. This is, uh, this is all we're going to do with it. Oh, my, uh, my crop is set. There we go. I had it restrained to proportions. I don't want to do that. I like to be able to, most of the time, adjust proportions however I see fit to fit what the image wants to do. There we go. Now you can see what the image is going to look like. I'm actually going to bring this in a little bit more. So there we go. Now we don't have a little bit of wedge of dark colored parking garage showing. Everyone's feet are there. The entire base of this front front uh, sculpture, I'm not sure what that is, is there. The trees over here have come out to, turned out to be fairly nicely vertical. I'm happy with that. This lamp post's vertical. The horizon is vertical enough. Uh, because this, uh, because of the angle to this parking garage, it's moving away from us. This part's closer than this part. It's going to look like it's sloping downward slightly, but because the lamp posts are vertical, uh, you can see that the horizon is actually on plane. Now this looks much more upright than it did before. It doesn't look like it's about to fall over, and so I'm going to crop this image. Now we have a finished product which looks a whole lot better and is something we can all pretty much be proud of. If you're interested, after this video, I will, uh, in, in just a few minutes, not even, just a few seconds, I'll share a handful more of the photos that I took during my hour and a half walk around San Diego. So thank you for uh, watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Uh, give me a thumbs up if this is helpful or useful to you. Um, and also, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I'd be more than happy to film a video for you if I have the technical knowledge and, and the, the software or, or equipment to do it with. And if you want to see more Photoshop tutorials, because I'm going to have more coming up in the next year, uh, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified whenever a new Photoshop or photography tutorial comes out.